Hi, I'm Alexis Brower with Astro Technology. I'm here with John Hedengren um, at BYU, and we're going to present on some advanced instrumentation and monitoring um, that was recently installed on a TLP off the coast of West Africa. And we're going to, John's going to give some of the um, longevity studies and software updates um, and future advancements in the field later on. Um, and I'm going to start by just sort of giving you a brief review of, of how monitoring and specifically fiber optic monitoring um, got to this point. Um, Astro Technology um, is a leader and has been a leader in the advanced instrumentation world. Um, we sp you know, have specialized in fiber optic sensor technology on both production and drilling risers for vortex-induced vibration and um, monitoring for fatigue in the touchdown zone, LNG facilities. Um, and let's see. Um, we're going to be talking about this TLP and the, the post installation that we um, did uh, about a year and a half ago and some of the results that we've seen from this, from study, both studies in the field and in our laboratories that we've done since. Um, but first of all, let me just give you a brief review of how fiber optics have sort of come into the world of energy. Um, we started in aerospace and there was a huge need to be able to monitor the inside of uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles um, inside the, ro the, the rocket e engine. And um, so we developed a sensor that could withstand the high temperatures and the high pressures um, and the need to not have electricity or any explosives um, in, in this extreme environment. Um, and from there, we also um, developed a central nervous system for um, with NASA for um, their Robonaut to be able to remotely um, operate very finesse movements um, and, and to be able to give real-time information, uh, pressure information and temperature information from the hand of this robot um, back to the user um, so that it can make such delicate mov movements like a human hand such as picking up an egg or doing very, very fine movements that are required um, on the International Space Station. And from there, being in Houston, we got sort of sucked into the energy world, of course. Um, we were approached by um, some operators to see if we could use this technology that we had developed um, in the subsea world. And surprisingly, there are a lot of overlaps in terms of remote operation, um, pressure and temperature issues, um, and you know, extreme environments and locations. So um, we began, and we were the first ever to install a system um, on production and drilling risers for vortex-induced vibration and in the touchdown zone for monitoring for fatigue. Um, here you can see is an example of our sensor system going um, the, uh, right here on the left is a picture looking down through the moon pool on the riser um, and that is our sensor cable going down and you can see um, in the middle picture in greater detail what our sensor stations look like here. Um, and they've been ruggedized for the field to be able to withstand the um, environmental conditions and, you know, l life conditions um, of being offshore. Um, here's, here's another picture of a riser. Um, our sensor stations are here in between the strakes. You can see it in black here. And um, the cables go down through a groove in the, in, in the uh, strakes. Um, and one of the things that ha you know inspires our company, I think, is, is sort of the need for um, better predictive models um, and sort of a paradigm shift within the industry um, to be able to detect and prevent or respond early to warning signs um, instead of responding 
after uh, major events or problems arise. Um, and so one of our um, what we're going to be what our oh, sorry, what our paper is about <laughs> that startled me. So we're going to be talking. Um, uh, one of our major developments was the ability. Most of uh, most of these previous projects that I've described have been installed on existing systems, and one of our uh, major developments over the past couple of years was the ability to install our systems on existing existing structures and systems um, sub C. Um, and we recently, like I said, installed our sensor systems to replace um, failing load cells on a TLP off the coast of West Africa. Um, it was a very successful project and we've continued to um, study and monitor the results as a first of its kind. Um, and um, some of our major concerns or hurdles to overcome in terms of uh, research and development were, were the bonding and the coupling of the sensors to the tendon legs um, and to develop bonding techniques and also develop a, a unique clamping system that was able to provide excellent coupling. Here is a picture of the of the tendon leg monitoring system. You can see here in yellow are our sensor stations. We have one at 60 feet and then one at 120 feet. Um, this is the clamp that we have developed. Um, and here in the transparent areas, you can see the sensor, the fiber optic sensor um, going through. We have fiber broad grading um, fiber optic sensors at 90 degree angles, so we can get all the bending. Um, modes and um, one major feature of not only this system but all of our systems are that you know we're able to provide um, very accurate up to one micro strain uh, measurements um, in real time and uh, without any penetration into the pipe um, and as you can imagine coupling is is um, for the life of the project a major um, it was a, a major, uh, what's the word, win for us, uh, advancement for us. Um, we're able to take a sampling rate of up, up to 250 hertz for this project, for this application. Um, we chose to use two hertz. And um, John, I think, is now going to talk a little bit more about some of the, um, of the, of the studies that that we've conducted in, his, in our findings. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Alexis. OK, so uh, Alexis touched on a really key point, which was how do we ensure that these sensors are bonded to the structures that we want to monitor? And so as part of this project, we uh, performed uh, bonding uh, tests with accelerated aging uh, samples. And uh, with, these, with these clamps, we had a number of pull buttons that we would uh, remove um, after the testing, after the accelerated aging, uh, to be able to determine what is uh, the tensile strength or the yield strength um, of these clamps. So we used uh, two methods to secure the clamps to the structure. One of those was the, were the bands uh, that would lock in, but also adhesive. Okay, and so you can see the green adhesive there on the uh, on the buttons that are attached and then uh, those would be pulled away and then we monitored the, um, the yield strength. Um, <coughs> and so we did with this, uh, what we did with this is a finite element analysis. Uh, there you can see the upper left, you can see the, uh, the sample. We are looking for localized uh, points of, 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 um, of fatigue um, and strain. And there you can see with the uh, four-point bending test, the instrumenta instrumented clamps as well. Uh, so I'm going to go forward. We also uh, did compression and tension tests. Now these were important on this uh, tension link platform. Uh, you know, both the bending but also the compression and tension. Um, we wanted to do the accelerated aging test, so we brought these samples up to 75% of yield strength 
for the steel uh, that was used on the uh, on these samples. So um, doing that, getting up to 75% of the yield strength with repeated cycles allows us to have an accelerated aging test and be able to anticipate what is going to be the bonding life um, over a long period of time. Um, so this is a, a mechanism that was developed specifically for this project at NASA. So we use the NASA test facilities to do this validation with the uh, support from the NASA engineers. And this is a mechanism that would take that button and then um, you know, pull up. And so we monitored the force as it would pull up. And at the point that the force decreased, that was the, uh, the point at which we recorded the yield strength. Uh, and we did this for uh, a number of samples. Each point on this plot, this is a semi-log on the Y scale, um, shows the yield strength for these, each of these buttons. And so we had a number of different uh, test clamps that were applied uh, both for the four point bending test but also for the compression and the tension. The, we expected the, the greatest bonding to occur when you apply these clamps in dry conditions. But we also wanted to test what happens when you bond these in subsea, simulated subsea conditions. And so the wet bonded um, tensile strength results uh, were between 50 and 130, well about 60 and 130 PSI, whereas the dry bonded, um, the median value was 236 PSI. And so uh, this gave us better assurance, even after the accelerated aging test, that applying these in subsea conditions post-installed, uh, it's going to have a very long service life and excellent um, bonding. Uh, you can also, um, I'm just showing the table, you have the min and the max. There was also somewhat of a distribution as well. And so when installing these on subsea environments, uh, one of the things that we like to recommend is that uh, if you're installing a system that is uh, critical for operations, that there be some redundancy of those sensor stations. And so uh, if there is uh, poor coupling for one of the clamps, um, the, the median value, we're trying to um, exceed the median value on this. Um, so here's the uh, clamp design. We've gone, actually gone through a couple different iterations of clamp design uh, to encourage the adhesive spread and uniformity um, to, to be able to improve the quality at which these clamps will, um, for the coupling of the sensor to the structure. Now this is actually a 3D printed uh, version of the mold. So you print the mold and then you pour the polyurethane into this mold to create the structure or the, uh, the clamp that can be diver or ROV installable. Okay, now this is, uh, these are some of the results from installing this clamp on a tension lake platform. This is in West Africa. Uh, and then you can see that the dominant change in load is really due to the tide uh, amplitude um, on that tension lake platform. And then you can see the um, you know, almost the uh, frequency modulated signal there. The, the wave amplitude is also about 30% of the, of the tide amplitude. Um, one of the things that we didn't expect coming into this now um, is, is that we were installing these clamps right at a thermocline. So actually the temperature compensation was very critical uh, for the, the sensor calibration. Uh, we um, you know, and, and when the divers installed these, they noticed the thermocline. Um, you know, the divers certainly would, would notice that, and they, they told us that that was there. We uh, were able to calibrate and remove the effects of, of temperature. Now I'm going to show you um, what we're doing with this, not only for measuring the loads, but also being able to predict into the future what the loads will be. This is really important, especially as you uh, as they're doing drilling operations, this particular operator uh, needed these uh, to be able to monitor these tensions for drilling. Um, to be able to understand what uh, we expect the tension to be into the future and be able to plan and adjust for that. And so you can see the, uh, the zero hours, that's the current time. And then you can see three days in advance with the tidal fluctuations, what you're expecting. So if you're doing a, a certain heavy lift operation, or um, you know, some other type of, of 
lift operation and the uh, in the drilling operations, you may time that at uh, a particular point in the tidal fluctuations to um, to not exceed either an upper or lower limit for the tensions on these um, tendons. Now this is zooming in on that particular region. Now this just shows uh, 24 hours uh, back, so one day back and then 20 hours ahead. Now you can see that um, you know on uh, there's the uh, two of them. Now that's where the drilling operations are occurring at the bottom two on that side of the platform. And so you can see also with these trends, you can see how much you've deviated away from an expected trajectory. So you can see the influence of your operations and be able to determine how much those affected the uh, change in load, so uh, deviation from the nominal conditions. Okay, so now I want to talk just a, a little bit more about where some of this advanced instrumentation is going. Uh, I mentioned earlier the collaboration with NASA uh, using their test facilities, and this is part of the Clear Gulf uh, project. Uh, the, the objective of this is to create the cutting edge techniques. As Alexis mentioned, you know, a lot of the industry um, has been reactive for much uh, of, uh, of, of the past times. I think that Macondo and, and other events have really uh, caused an awakening that we need to be uh, preventative. We need to be able to monitor and predict when something is going to happen so that we can use a soft touch versus a large response. And that's what the objective of the Clear Goal study is, to develop uh, advanced sensing techniques um, and also um, you know, systems that can monitor drilling and production systems. Uh, we have an, a number of collaborators that we've uh, spoken with. This has been going on since 2010, and there are a couple that have been involved in this project. Um, and with that, we we'll, would like to conclude the presentation and thank you for your attention. We'd be glad to answer any questions.